Welcome back to Line Following in Gears with A Posteriori. In our last module, we covered the three-state algorithm and looked at the efficiencies we got by just adding one more state for the edge of the line when we're really close to where we want to be. And today we'll talk about the five-state algorithm, proportional control, and look at a few different scenarios of line following. Before we begin designing our five-state algorithm, I want to take a look at a different world than the simple curves world that we've been using. I want to now take you to the sharp turns world. The sharp turns world has much sharper lines uh, for our line following challenges and very, very tight turns that you have to make in order to get to the end. Now, our gamification scaffolding isn't necessarily going to be appropriate for this particular world. So let's strip it back down to its original version before we add uh, gamification scaffolding as before. And just try to test whether a simple three-state algorithm solution run can work for it. Uh, as you remember, we'll need to add a while true just to make uh, our, our robot run until it's, until it's done. It can fall off the map or we can stop it manually. And as we look at our robot run in the sharp turns world, we can see that as we come off lines, our robot actually has to make quite a drastic maneuver just to get back and it. It actually falls quite off the line. And basically in the line following algorithms that we, we need to have, we shouldn't really be able to get off the line so, so widely. We should always be able to track the line pretty closely and never get to a point where it, we're either at zero or at hundred percent light intensity. So how do we do that? We'll need to make sure that our turns are way sharper than they have been so far. And even though we thought that our turn about one wheel were sharp, uh, it's just not sharp enough for these kinds of turns. And as we look at it from a different angle, we can see that as we get to a point in the line where we've lost the line, our robot doesn't have the ability to track back tightly towards the line. And in order to remedy that, we're just going to have to create a, a sharper turn. Now, if we create sharper turns in the three-state algorithm, I'll, let's look at what that would feel like. Say we make a sharp turn where our robot will now turn about the center of the axis between the wheels such that this, the color sensor isn't really moving forward anymore in an arc. It's just staying in place and rotating. Let's see what that looks like. And we can see a lot of jittery movements as the robot tries to inch forward. But what I really want to see is what it looks like when it gets to this edge. Okay, you can see that it's going to be able to track the line really, really closely because of this new turn geometry. At the same time, though, it's just slippering and sliding all over the place and not really making too much of a forward motion. So this isn't great. And in order to fix that, what we can do is add some states in between going forward and this very sharp turn. And in order to do that, we're going to need a five-state algorithm or an end-state algorithm, depending on how many additional states you'd want to add. And we'll go from five state algorithm to basically proportional control where you have, where we can have as many of discrete amount of states as we'd like in a fairly continuous manner. Okay, so let's make a little bit of room for our five state algorithm. We'll just duplicate our old three state algorithm. I'm going to leave these here for now um, so that later we can use it for our uh, gamification scaffolding for the sharp turns world. And I'm going to add, I'm going to rename this to be the five state algorithm. And now we need to add two new states. And I'll just put uh, two new else ifs, one between the first if and the middle else if, and a second one between the middle else if and the last else. And now I will need to add some comparisons to our else ifs. And we'll need to make a decision about our bands. So our new bands are going to be, let's say, at the very, very edge, we want to make this very, very sharp turn. So between 90 and 100, anything greater than 90. And down below, 
we'd want to be anything below 10 to fall into the last edge case, okay, where we're turning back the other way and very sharply. Our straight movement should go in the middle. Between 60 and 90, we're going to want to make maybe the same turns that we had made before, maybe slightly less sharp, uh, now that we have a very sharp edge case. And we'll do the same thing for the other side, anything greater than 10. We'll just turn the other way. And finally, this comparison will be 40. So anything between 40 and 60 falls into the straight middle line. Anything between 60 and 90, it's a moderate turn. And anything between 90 and 100, we'll see a very sharp turn. And similarly, between 10 and 40, we'll have the, between 10 and 40, we'll have the moderate turn and between 10 and zero, uh, where we're about to fall off to the other side of the uh, black line, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be doing another sharp turn. And now we can see how this algorithm fares in the new sharp turns world I've introduced. And as we see our robot get to the edge of the line, it's much better able to hug the line and not fall off. But when we get towards the other case where we're very close to the edge of the black area uh, where we are about to fall off the other line we're still not managing that pretty well and the reason for that is the robot is probably moving a bit too fast for this kind of world so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow down some of the speeds so that um, it's it's also able to manage these other turns And now we can see uh, very smooth transitions and the robot has the chance to stop before it's too close to the edge of the line so that it doesn't miss it. And even though it's a bit slower than before, um, we can see that the robot has a better chance of tracking the line and uh, making all these very, very sharp and considerate turns. And we see it stumbled into a problem area over here as well. Um, it's not perfect yet. And we can keep tweaking it and trying to make sure that we get to the very end of the line. Now, if we want to change the gamification scaffolding to, to be able to be used for this world, we can start thinking about you know, what, what is this location really for the robot. Um, and use uh, X and Y coordinates around this point uh, where, where the robot should end. I will let you deal with a gamification scaffolding for the sharp turns world. For now, I'd like to talk about proportional control. Proportional control takes what we've been doing so far to its limit. Basically, moving from a two state to a three state to a five state solution we keep increasing the number of scenarios that we can manage of different light intensities. But imagine if we could manage a hundred scenarios, basically every light intensity that we can get back from the colored sensor from zero to a hundred, we have a different state for each one of those. That would be the 101 state algorithm. Well, instead of doing 101 different states and imagine maybe that you would have a color sensor that could actually return uh, intensities in, in decimal points up to two or three decimal points, well, we don't want to necessarily create the 10,000 state algorithm or even the 101 state algorithm. So instead, we're going to use a proportional control algorithm that moves away from defining discrete states and basically controlling each wheel speed using a formula. Let's think about that for a second. When our robot sees somewhere in the middle, let's call it in light intensity 50, we want the robot to go at top speed forward. Both wheels should be rotating at their top speeds. As we start moving off the line, let's, as we start moving off the edge of the line, let's say to the right of the line, 
We want our right wheel to start moving forward faster and our left wheel to start moving forward slower or even backwards. And in order to do that, we can create a formula whereby we take that difference between what we expect to be our optimum 50 and where it's at right now between 0 and 100. We'll call the difference between where we are and 50 the error. Once we've calculated the error, we can add the error to our outside wheel and subtract the error from our inside wheel. Okay? It doesn't matter if it's right or left because the line following algorithm is symmetrical. So first, let's calculate the error in a proportional control algorithm. I'll make some room for my new function. We'll call it proportional control. And we'll start by, as I said, measuring the error. We're going to need a new variable called error. And we'll want to set the error to be the reflected light intensity minus 50 so that the error is really high when we are on either edge. It's going to be as high as 50 when we're at 100 light intensity. And it's going to be negative 50 when we're at zero light intensity. And it will be zero error when we're right in the middle of the edge of the line when we're seeing 50 light intensity. Okay, this is how you would calculate that. Minus 50. All right, so now that we have the error, we can move on to calculating the left and right motor speeds. Now, you have to pick one side. So the outside wheel will need to increase its speed with an increased error while the inside wheel decreases its speed and even goes negative as the error increases. So first I'll create two new variables where we'll hold the speeds for the outside and inside wheels. Instead of calling them right and left, I'll just call it the outside and inside speed. Outside speed, inside speed. We'll later be able to interchange these whether we want to track the left edge of the line or the right edge of the line. And now we'll need to calculate those speeds. So let's start with the outside speed. The outside speed is whatever base speed we'd like to, to, to start with and add onto it the error. So let's say our base speed is going to be 20, and to, and, and to that we'll just add the error. So this speed can go between, our outside speed is going to be able to go between 70, between the lowest error would be negative 50, so it would be between negative 30 and 70 speed. Okay, that's quite fast compared to what we did before. And our inside speed, Similarly, uh, we'll start with the base 20, but instead of adding the error, we'll subtract the error. And its potential speeds will also go between negative 30 and 70, but along the opposite direction. And now we'll need to assign these speeds to motors. So we'll just have our regular move tank call. And to one side, we'll assign the inside speed and to the other wheel, we'll assign the outside speed. Now in this case, we're tracking the right-hand edge of the line because the outside speed is on the right wheel. And now let's go back to the simple curves world uh, in order to test this out before we test it on our sharp turns world. Okay, let's just make sure that we have the base. And we can see that after initial jitter, uh, the robot is acting quite smoothly compared with the other state solutions that we've had, two, three, or five. 
and simply the reason because we have now a discrete number of states equal to the number of light intensity values that we get back from the color sensor. So s smoother turns for s less error and sharper turns for higher error. Uh, let's bring back our scaffolding here and see if our time has improved using this proportional control. Uh, the three state solution gave us uh, around 26 seconds result. Uh, so here we are. We I put back my scaffolding for the simple world solution. And we can see a, a bit of an improvement. We can also change our proportional control algorithm to start with a faster base. And we can see whether that helps uh, improve the speed. And we can see the robot is much faster, but it does seem to have a lot of uh, overcorrection, and a lot more jitters. It's able to complete the line, at least in this run. Uh, again, a, a big reduction in, in elapsed time between using our last uh, version and this. Um, now, another thing we might want to worry about is top speeds and, and bottom speeds. We might not necessarily want to go as fast as 80. In order to get around that, we need to add something called a gain. And in order to do that, we can just add a multiplier to our error. So uh, we'll just add another equation. We'll make it multiply. We'll add this whole bit. We'll add this, the current error, to one side. And the other side will just be our gain. So if I have a gain of 1, uh, my error will just be the same as before. It'll oscillate between negative 50 and 50. But if I choose a gain of 0 0.5, let's say, now my error will oscillate between negative 25 and 25. And uh, in order to get some uh, negative values, I might want it to rotate about, uh, let's say, a base speed of 10. It might be a bit slow, but we should be able to see pretty smooth motion. Okay, and if we want, we can uh, increase our gain. And see different effects of the gain on our robot behavior. Okay, since the robot is tracking the middle of the line so well, it's staying a lot within uh, its base speed area, which is only 10. So the error is quite small. Um, so we might want to increase the base speed. And basically, you'll just need to find a, a perfect combination of these speeds and gains uh, to make this work for you. So once we're happy with our base speeds and our gain, uh, we can try to use this algorithm on our sharp turns world. And I'll let you do that. And there should be a combination of gains and base speeds that will allow you to solve the sharp turns world all the way to the end. Uh, your robot might need to move a little bit slow, but um, it, it should be able to complete even the sharpest of all turns uh, towards the end of that, of that world. You'll need to find just the right numbers to make that work. And there you have it, uh, and you can, I'm sure you can get to a point where that could work for you as well. Uh, when it gets to the end of the line, the robot actually uh, does a 360 turn and starts tracking the opposite side of the line on its way back.
So it's really slow, but you can see that um, at least it completes the entire uh, line. And I leave you with this. I'm sure you can find a better solution uh, with better values that makes the robot get to the end and uh, does it in a, maybe a, a more efficient manner in a faster time. Uh, as a parting shot for me, uh, I would like to uh, introduce you to just a few other ideas here. Um, we won't be covering all of these in this set of tutorials, maybe in a future one, but basically we have a lot of other line following challenges in the gears world. There are challenges for when the robot comes off of a line and needs to figure out what to do uh, in order to find the re-emergence of the line. Uh, we call these gaps. And there's other challenges that deal with obstacles in the middle of the path. So it's a pretty simple line, but you have to also get around the obstacle. And you can use the ultrasonic sensor for that. And finally, there's a set of challenges around junctions. And for junctions, uh, there might be uh, some clever way that you might be able to use a single color sensor, but we would also recommend looking at two color sensor algorithms uh, to do with line following. You may still use one of the color sensors to track the edge of one line while you use the other color sensor to uh, figure out uh, intersections. But there might be other ways that you could use two color sensors as well. Happy exploring and please enjoy. If, if you have any comments about the line following set of tutorials or the gears world that we've just introduced to you, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Please write us at info at aposteriori.com.sg or leave us a comment if you're watching this on YouTube. Thanks.